So prior to survival, mindset, tactics, skill, and equipment. So the first one is mindset. And mindset is, is the most important thing. How many of you guys watch uh, that Michael Jordan documentary that came out? Anybody? Anybody? No? Um, so like I grew up in the 80s and 90s and I was super into basketball in middle school and high school. And so that was like prime time for Michael Jordan. So for me, that's a big deal. Like if you want to learn about mindset, like you should watch that documentary and you learn a lot about mindset. And basically he decided he was going to be the best in the world and win every time. And that's what he did. Um, and it, it really wasn't that he was more talented physically or give, I mean, obviously than the average person for sure, but there's probably half a dozen or a dozen people in the world that are just as talented or more talented maybe than he was at the time. Um, but they did not approach the, uh, their preparedness for the game and they did not approach the game itself. Um, and then overall how to develop teammates and culture and everything about it in the same way that he did. And so essentially, after the first four or five years, anytime he wanted to, he kind of won. Only won six championships kind of because other circumstances created situations where it did, you know, the, the team broke up or he just retired or, or whatever it is, right? And so that documentary kind of covers that. And I think that is a very good example of mindset, right? He, like, when Michael Jordan walked on the court, the game was usually already decided. And it was decided, and everybody knew it, right? There's no question really in people's mind, like, what's gonna happen? Everybody knew that the Bulls were gonna win. And most times that's what happened. And so mindset is really important, but, but that is not divorced from um, the other things of tactics, skill, and equipment, right? They're not, you, you can't like just have mindset by itself and have preparation and prepare, and, you know, and be able to accomplish a thing. You have to have tactics, skill, and equipment to support that mindset. And having tactics, skill, and equipment that is mature and developed um, will create more mindset as well, right? So a mindset for sure is the most important thing. It's just kind of your perspective on really anything, like in life, are you grateful for things? right? A, a sense of being grateful is a thing that sets you up to perform well in life. And that's not something that just happens, right? Like sometimes you hear people will talk about like, be thankful. It's like, well, how do you muster up thankfulness? It's not really a thing. You can't muster up emotion, really, right? You can do a thing. Um, and if you do a thing, like give thanks for something, that thing will make you thankful, right? And so if you want to be confident, I don't just say be confident, muster up confidence, like get out on the range and be confident. Like that's not how that works, right? So you have to do something to gain competence and skill, and that will then result in, comp in confidence. And you gotta have the right perspective on how you think about the development of that skill. Because you can actually, there are people who are good at things who don't, who lack confidence, right? Who, for whatever the circumstances and however they're interacting, like with their coach or whoever, um, you know, maybe it's a negative environment, it could be all kinds of different things. Um, but they don't have confidence even though they actually have confidence. And so it's important to make sure you develop confidence in what you're doing um, and preparedness, right? Another, another thing to build confidence is, is like if you, not just your ability to execute the skill, but how prepared are you to think about the situation? So the more, like the more training you go to, the more confident you're gonna be. The more you talk about different scenarios and different things, the more confident you're gonna be. The more input you get from people outside that have more experience than you, the more confident you can be, right? And that's for everybody at all levels. It's not something that stops. And that's really for any area of life. It's for dealing with violent confrontations. It's for making holsters. It's for, you know, how to, how to interact with your spouse. It's for all of those things. So mindset is really important. Uh, the second thing is gonna be tactics. So tactics, I define tactics by um, something that you do to manipulate the situation to your advantage. Okay, so the, the area that I think is the easiest to talk about this is, again is athletics right so a in a team sport environment you would run a play right so like in football if everyone's gonna line up you're gonna have a play that you plan to execute and there's gonna be people whose job is to like block there's gonna be people who who do multiple different things in order to distract or confuse the um, the other team in order to you know get as many yards or score a touchdown or whatever it is, right? And so that would be a tactic, would be an example of a tactic. You can have a bunch of people on that football team who are all really skilled, right? You can have the best football players in the world, but if they don't work together as a team, is it gonna work? No, you'd have people who are half their ability that if they all work together as a team, they're gonna win. And so tactics are very important, very powerful, and you can have the right mindset, and you can have the right skill and the right equipment, but if you don't have good tactics, it sets you back really, really far. And so like in the context of dealing with a violent confrontation, you know, simple like manipulation of space is a big thing. OK, 
okay? So if like, if you stand in the middle of the room, you know, like right now, I can't see behind me, and potentially if I thought there was a threat, if I'm standing in the middle of the room, that threat could come from 360 degrees, right? And so that's harder to deal with. If I have a partner, we could stand back to back and he could have 180 degrees sector and I could have 180 degrees, right? And I've just made my problem more simple. If I'm by myself, I, one thing I could do is I could stand against a wall, right? Now I have 180 degrees to deal with. Does that make sense? Um, I also, I could go stand in the corner um, and now I have 90 degrees to deal with. So I just made that problem smaller. Although if you stand in the corner, maybe you've just reduced your ability to move around in a situation and limit your mobility, you might not want to do that. So there's going to be trade-offs to things. Like if we're concerned about somebody coming in from the outside who's a bad guy, like we know there's a door here and, a, and one there, right? And if I'm looking at this, that's a door that opens up to the room and that's a long hallway with a door at the end. If I had to deal with a bad guy coming in the room, where would I want them to come in? I'd want them to come in there, right? Because I they can't move left or right. I've, essentially, I've channelized them into a I've been to a funnel, right? And so if I could keep someone com coming in the room here and force whoever is going to come into the room through there, it's a, you know greatly to my advantage because I have all of this room and I have concealment and or cover from here to deal with to manipulate that situation. So tactics are really important. I mean, I would say for um, in, the, in the world of like professional gun carriers and law enforcement and military, tactics are the thing that really separate us from the enemy or the bad guys, right? The fact that, I mean, obviously there's lots of money and time and invested into equipment and that is a big strategic advantage as well. But really how we utilize that equipment um, is what's really important, that we, that we rehearse things and work together as a team. Um, and in the law enforcement space, it's really pretty simple because usually the bad guys are not very well thought out or detailed or trained. So, you know, a couple cops, even averagely trained, can usually do a pretty good job of dominating a criminal through manipulation of space and time and distance and all of those things. Tactics training is something that's really important and that is something that will really, will really start to develop your mindset and really probably change how you live your life a little bit. How you, how you walk into a room or a space and how you think about the world and what's going on around you, um, how you walk to your car, all of those things. Um, as you develop good tactics and a good mindset, those start, things start to change. And not that they're something you have to think about all the time and you're always like worried about it, but they just become part of your life. They become a habit. And you just do certain things differently than other people. And then skill. So skill is the actual doing of things. So the skill is gonna be like, how do you stand there and shoot accurately? Um, how do you stand there and shoot fast? How do you do like a reload and shoot? All of those things are gonna be skill things. How do you draw from your holster? You know, how do you, how do you deploy a knife? How do you use a knife? How do you, you know, all of those things, all, all the skill stuff, which would be in the context of sports, it's like throwing the ball or shooting the basketball, you know, or um, how to move on defense, you know, all same, same types of things, those are skill things um, that you should get really good at. And if you're really good at those things, you'll be able to be more effective in your tactics. And again, if you're really good at those things, you'll be confident, which will translate into a cultivated strong mindset. Right, so skill is important. Skill is what we spend, well, skill is what like mature and responsible people spend most of their time on. Um, most people probably spend most of their time on equipment, um, but uh, skill is really important. And then finally, equipment. There's kind of two, two sides to the sword of that, right? Uh, overall, I'd say it's overrated, and the average person spends way too much time concerned about like what sights they have, what trigger they have, what you know, all of the minutia of some little thing, and they don't really spend any time on tactics and skill. And that person should put time and resource into things that are more important. The equipment can either be an enabler or a disabler, right? And so you can have lousy equipment designed by somebody who doesn't understand tactics and skills that interferes with your ability to perform at a high level, right? Or you can have equipment that is optimized to work with how you do business and it enhances um, and really, in some ways, it's, it's not so much that it enhances, but it's almost like it shouldn't, you shouldn't have to think about your equipment. Or you're gonna go do something, and you have to think about, if you have problem solve something on your equipment, then that's an issue, right? And most, unfortunately, most equipment is like that. If you put pressure on, on the person under training, oftentimes the thing that fails is not the person, but it's their equipment. It's like with a holster, um, you know, you're in some, grappling or whatever scenario and 
the clip that is t on your belt, it pops out, and then someone goes to draw, to draw the gun out of their pants, and they have a holster on it. All right, that is not an uncommon thing, and obviously that's that's a problem, right? It's not a you can solve that problem, but if you needed to draw your gun and shoot someone right now, and you have a holster attached to your gun, then obviously that's not optimal. So. Um, ensuring that you have equipment that is designed to work well to enhance your ability to do things is important. And even like in the extreme context, um, like a law enforcement tactical team or in the military, if you have like, you know, night vision and other things, there's a certain point where you have no idea what you're doing and you make things more complex equipment wise. And again, it is a disabler. Um, but there is a point where if you understand what you're doing and you're working together as a team, and you have good skills and you have good tactics, the, the, the equipment, if it's the right equipment layered on top, can be an enormous force mul multiplier and um, give you a huge advantage over your adversary. And obviously that would be a good thing as well. So, um, and it is just trying to, be, trying to be reasonable with that, trying to be reasonable in understanding where you at in your maturing process and your ability to utilize equipment. For most people in here, if we like threw them, you know, night vision and plate carrier and, you know, IR laser and everything, they just, have, you know, it wouldn't be an enabler for most people in this room, right? It would be a huge challenge. Um, but for some people, it's not. So for some people, it's a, it's an enabler, it makes them better. So, um, mindset, tactics, skill, and equipment is a really important way to think about everything. I mean, I, like, if I think about manufacturing, I think about the mindset, tactics, and skill, and equipment of manufacturing, right? What is our, what is our perspective for, um, how to make the process better and more efficient and more consistent, right? What are the tactics for that? How do we, how do we move stuff through the process? Um, what processes go before other processes, right? Um, the skills of it, how do you actually do, how do you buff a holster, right? That's a skill thing that is important and you have to work on. And equipment, what do you, equipment do you have to support it? There's sometimes, like, if you have a lousy dust collector and the dust goes everywhere, then that is a disabler. And so get a better dust collector that actually sucks all the dust in, right? Get a, if your, um, if your holster shells are moving as the CNC passes by, right? And it leaves a rough edge on it, then that's kind of an equipment problem, right? And so it's, how do you solve that equipment problem of how do you get better hold down? How do you change your speeds and feeds of your CNC so that you get a better edge finish, right? And it's all, like it is a paradigm uh, the priorities of survival that you can use really in any part of your life to kind of think about, okay, we're trying to solve a problem. What are the different ways that we can think about this? What are the aspects we can change to improve ourselves and make us better and make and solve this problem that we're faced with?